Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we will try to understand everything there is to understand about Kubernetes to get you started with Kubernetes. So we'll deploy a full stack application with a backend and a frontend and see how the communication works using Kubernetes. Okay, so this is going to be a total hands-on approach and we will see how communication happens in a microservice kind of architecture of an application. Now I have added different chapters or sections for your easy reference so you can go back to any of the chapters you like re-watching it again and uh, but I would recommend you to go step by step to basically understand everything on the go so you will basically get the overall idea of how everything really works so let's see what we are going to work on first we will start with docker so we'll first see how docker deployment really works how we deploy our application using docker okay then we will see the limitation of a docker deployment like deploying a single docker container and then we'll see how kubernetes address those limitations and overcome those limitations so we will see that after that we will understand the kubernetes so what is the overall architecture how kubernetes really works what are pods what are deployments what are control planes we will understand everything so we will basically understand the overall architecture of kubernetes and at last by summing all things up we will basically deploy a full stack application which is in react and node onto a kubernetes cluster which is basically running locally on your system and regardless of the programming language the steps will be the same for any application running on java be it on java python or any other languages or framework okay so i would recommend you to go step by step step for a better understanding because sometimes kubernetes and whole Kubernetes architecture and deployment can be an overwhelming subject, but uh, I will try to simplify it as much as I can. And at last, if you want to follow along, make sure you have Kubernetes installed on your local machine. So this can be easily done with Docker desktop if you're working with a Windows PC or a Mac OS. And if you have Linux, you can simply install Docker toolbox for it. And for the coding part, I will be using VS Code as my editor. So without wasting any further time, let's get started with the video, okay? Okay, so let's understand how Docker deployment really works. Okay, so we'll start with the basics. In Docker de deployment, you have a Docker file. So this Docker file basically contains all the instructions written, the dependencies we need to install, the location, the base image we want to use, command which we want to run, and dependency installations and all the stuff is written in this Docker file. And this Docker file is basically used to create the Docker image in which it will create a Docker container. So we basically feed this Docker file to the docker daemon which is currently running on your local system and this docker daemon basically creates an image okay so this is the image created by docker daemon so the docker creates this lightweight image which is basically a standalone package of your whole application basically generate your application so this is a docker deployment okay so let's look at this, some of the limitation of handling a docker deployment so so the first limitation is scaling. So scaling is quite difficult if you are working with Docker deployment because it's a very uh, hands-on process. So you have you need to run the Docker build and run command again. So it's very tedious to do that. Then we have orchestration. So it's very hand difficult to handle multiple Docker containers running. So the con orchestration part is very difficult using Docker deployment. Then we have the high availability. So what if some Docker container fails or some error or something, Docker daemon will not able to restart it by itself. So you need to go to Docker and look for all the unhealthy containers and you will do that by yourself. So this is going to reduce the downtime of your application. Next thing is storage orchestration. So with Docker, we, we have volumes, but sometimes we need some external resources like some EFS or something like that. So we, we won't be able to do that with our Docker deployment. Then we have rolling updates and rolling updates and rollbacks so your application is running unhealthy or there's some bugs in that you want to revert back to the previous version you need to create your docker image again and then you need to push that changes then you need to update your application code then you need to build the image and then again run it so it's a very so again this is a very tedious task and the last is self-healing as you need to check manually all your containers are running healthy or not if not you need to restart it and do all the process again so this is quite the limitations of a uh, docker deployment okay now let's understand kubernetes deployment and how it is different from a docker deployment okay so in order to work with the whole kubernetes architecture you need an image so that image which we created using docker we need to have it before we start our architecture flow so kubernetes wants your image to be fully ready so this image can be hosted on any 
any image repository such as docker hub ecr or something like that kubernetes will fetch your image from that repository so this is the part where we have the docker image as we created a docker file which contains all the instruction written to basically create an image same in kubernetes we need an yaml file in kubernetes these yaml can be multiples we will see how uh, we can create multiple yaml files later in this video so so these yaml files are exactly the same as docker file in functionality wise because they basically have all the details all the requirements are written in it specification for defining and configuring resources that will be run on our kubernetes cluster okay such as pods deployments and all the stuff okay don't worry if you don't understand any of this we will understand it on this video so we had our yaml file ready so what we'll do we will put this into something and known as control plane or master node which is basically kubernetes daemon or like we have docker daemon we have kubernetes control plane or the master node in which we basically feed these yaml files the instruction written in the yaml kubernetes will make sure that to basically deploy all those things which is mentioned in that yaml file like the resources the pods the replicas the networks and all the stuff will be handled by kubernetes by reading those yaml files okay after reading all the instructions from those YAML files, Kubernetes will basically deploy your application in multiple containers or pods or something like that. Okay, so as you can see, we have multiple pods. We will understand what pod is and we'll, we have all those pods uh, created for us by Kubernetes by reading that, those YAML files. Now let's understand a little bit of Kubernetes and how the whole architecture really works with Kubernetes. Okay, so as a developer, you write those yaml files which we talked about okay and as i told you we need to feed those to kubernetes daemon or the control plane which is running on your system so we need a way to communicate with that so the, from the developer perspective we need a way to communicate with that control plane as you can see this is the yaml file which we are talking about so to communicate or to feed this yaml file to kubernetes control plane we basically use a command line tool which is kubectl okay so this kubectl basically is a way of communicating developer and uh, to the control plane or any of the services running inside a kubernetes cluster okay so the the best thing in the kubernetes overall architecture we need to understand is the master node or the control plane okay so as the developer you will write write commands using kubectl and you will feed that to the api to the cube api and that cube api will control all the stuff inside the control plane okay so let's go uh, one by one the components we have inside so let's understand the first component which is api server api server is the main component of the kubernetes architecture which is basically providing the kubernetes api and handling request to manage clusters basically handles different components okay so let's understand other kubernetes components so the first one is scheduler so the scheduler in kubernetes is responsible for placing pods onto nodes in a in the cluster based on resource requirements and other constraints we mentioned in the yaml files okay. so this is a scheduler then we have ccm which is a cloud control manager so this component manage interaction between the kubernetes control plane and cloud provider apis such as um, aws gcp and all those stuff okay so the next one is cm which is control manager so so the control manager is basically responsible for various cluster management tasks such as node replication endpoint service account token and namespace controls okay so uh, like you looking at all the which pods is healthy and which is needed to be restarted and how many replication how many uh, instances of that uh, application we want everything is managed by control plane okay so the next one is etcd so it is basically a key value store in kubernetes basically provide dynamic updates to the overall control plane so for example suppose one pod is created or updated or deleted all this information is basically maintained in etcd so this is the basic architecture of a control plane okay now this control plane when we feed the yaml file which which will go through everything it will basically create all those replicas the resources the name and services and all those stuff will be created by master node and then master node will transfer that to different nodes okay let's understand what different components we have in our worker node okay so 
the first thing we need to understand is every worker node have a kubelet so the kubelet is an agent which basically runs on each worker node and and communicates with the kubernetes api server which is this one uh, it basically manages the containers on the node ensuring that the containers described in the yamls are running and they are healthy in their state okay then we have a kube proxy so a kube proxy is a network proxy that runs on each worker node as i told you it basically maintains network rules and perform connection forwarding for kubernetes services so it basically enables a communication between different kubernetes between different kubernetes objects and also from outside world okay the next thing is the most important one that is the pod so pod basically described as the smallest deployable units in kubernetes pods can contain one or more container that share networking and storing resources so when the image which we are talking about in the docker deployment that image gets deployed in this pod only so one pod can have multiple image or containers running in our example we are working with a react application and node.js application we will put both of them inside a single pod now if you're running this on your local machine you must all you must be having only of one control plane and one worker node okay but if you move this architecture to cloud based you can have multiple yeah you can have multiple worker nodes there okay as you can see we can have multiple pods running inside one more worker node which have different programming languages running like one pod will have python and one will have uh, only a database server now let's see that every pod will have a service and this service is basically intercommunication between different pods inside the node okay so all the services basically report to kube proxy and in and kube proxy basically makes it available for the outside world so this is so the outside traffic will hit the kube proxy and then kube proxy according to pod availability will transfer request to different parts so this is the overall kubernetes architecture so let's get down to the coding part so as you can see we have two directory here so the first first one is front end and the second one is server so as i told you this is a full stack application we have react application and a node.js server running so let's check out the node.js application first so we have an index.js file and this index.js file is a pretty simple node.js server using express and using os which is the inbuilt node.js module what this node.js application is doing is basically returning the os host name which is it is currently running okay so this will give you the name of the host name on the system which it is running currently okay and then we are sending this back as in response so that front end can consume it okay um, nothing fancy here but uh, the one thing we need to notice here is the port so this is running on port 3001 now let's go to the docker file and see what it is written inside docker file so again this is a very simple docker file it basically contains a from image so the base image which we are getting it from the docker hub so we are using node alpine here then we ha are having the vector which is set to app so this is the working directory inside the container and then we are exposing the port 3001 and then and then we are basically copying the uh, package json back to the container then we are doing npm install to install all the dependencies and then we are copying all the source file which is the index.js and all the stuff back to the container and then we want to run every time the container runs we want to run this command which is npm start which will basically start the server so this is the basic server node.js file docker file we'll be working on with okay so let's go to the front end and see what we have there okay so again we have a docker file in the front end as well so it is the same only the difference is the port number which is this front end is running on port 3000 okay let's see the app.js file in the react.js application so what will be rendered on the screen if you don't understand react that is totally fine here so i will tell you what we are doing here so we are having an api request to the server which is running on 3001 and we are just getting the result from it okay and then we are just putting that result on this and we are just putting the result back onto the screen so the host name which will return from the server will be will be printed here okay so this is the basic functionality of this app js okay so this link which is currently set which is hard coded to localhost 3001 like when we move this architecture to cloud we will have that we'll have a load balancer or any kind of url that load balance provide we'll put that here and that will be dynamic okay so 
this is the overall architecture of the application see so the front end and the back end okay now let's get down to kubernetes part okay now as you can see i have added another folder here now which is infra okay so this infra folder will contain all the kubernetes stuff okay so as you can see we have four files here two files are for front end and two for the server okay so the first one uh, every kubernetes architecture you will have these two objects which is known as the deployments and the services so let's first understand deployment and then we'll understand what are services okay so let's open the deployment file so before uh, going to the deployment let's understand what are deployments and why we really need deployments okay deployments are basically used to manage life cycle of application inside the pods okay so it basically handles the pods and do all the management like like creating and handling multiple replicas running inside the pods okay uh, deployments also helps to scale the pods like if you want to add more instances of that pod or the application you can use using deployments only okay updates and rollbacks can also be handled using deployments so this is what deployments is now let's understand the deployment file first then we will be understanding what are services so let's understand the deployment file okay so let's open the first deployment which is the server deployment okay so let's understand it one by one okay so the first thing you can see here is app version okay see so the app version basically specifies the api version of kubernetes uh, that is currently running so different app version contains different objects uh, so we are using kind here which is an uh, object which has been stored in this version of api version v1 so this is the deployment kind okay there can be other kinds as well like services pods replica set config maps and all those stuff but we are sticking to deployment and services in this video then we have metadata so which is the name of the deployment we are using yt server then we have this spec, spec block inside that spec block as you can see the biggest thing here is the replicas 3 so mentioning replicas 3 here that we are telling kubernetes that we want three instances of this server running at a time okay so it will make sure that at every given time three server uh, is running and if any of goes down it will basically restart and basically maintain the amount that is the three so it will always have three server running okay then we have selectors specify how the deployment selects which ports to manage then we have the template block inside the template block we have the again the metadata which is same as the match levels then we have the spec file inside the spec file we define the image so this is the image which is hosted on my docker hub okay so the i am rishav is the username and the uh, repository name which is yt server when we build docker image we basically push that to the docker hub so you kubernetes can fetch it from there okay so this is the basic deployment file and this deployment file is same for the server and if you go to the front end one we have the same one only the name has been changed and we don't have any replicas here and it is getting uh, the image from yt front end repository that is on docker hub okay the next thing we have is services okay services is basically used for for the communication between different pods and the queue proxy it basically helps to provide and stable endpoints through which we can communicate through which different pods can communicate with each other okay provides a stable dns and ip address for pods and it also distribute different incoming traffics between multiple pods okay so this can be of three types which is cluster ip node port and node balancers and uh, yeah so we'll be using node balance in in this example so let's open the server file and see what we have written inside that okay so it is the same one as you can see the service kind is in the v1 app version so everything is same if you go to the spec part we are providing a load balancer okay so this is the load balancer type of service then we are having the selector this does so the selector will select all the app with the name yt server that we mentioned inside the match labels of this template here okay so this is what why we are using selector here and inside the ports we have the name and the protocol and the port and the target port which we are running so the port we mentioned in the uh, 
uh, docker file and the port which we mentioned inside the react application so 3001 so this is the overall code part so this is the basic service file which we which we create for having a communication between different ports inside a kubernetes cluster now let's feed all these kubernetes files yaml files inside the kubernetes control plane so for that as i told you we need a command which is kubectl and we need to provide the next command which is apply so the apply command basically apply all the yaml manifest files to the kubernetes cluster so as you can remember all our infra file inside the infra folder so as the infra folder contains only the yaml file we can use kubectl apply dash f which stand for files so if you have single file you can do something like svc dot yaml but as we have everything inside the infra folder what i'm going to do is do infra and it will basically get all the files inside the infra and it will basically deploy all those objects onto the kubernetes cluster so let's press enter and as you can see um, all our deployments and services has been created so deployment of the front end services of the front end the server and the services of the server so let's see how the deployment is working so to get the list of ports we have another command which we have which can which we can use using kubectl get pods so as you can see it is currently um, the kubernetes is control plane is basically assigning different different pods to different nodes so currently we have only one which we are because we are running this in on on our local system so as you can see we have three yt server as you can remember we have three replicas of our backend server and one of our frontend server so currently the frontend one is being created so as you can see the kubernetes also provides some hash to the name which we provided like the yt server and this one so to basically identify different pods okay okay now let's see this how the services are working so again we will use kubectl for that kubectl get services and you can see we have two services which we are running so the first one is the backend which is the server and then the front end one and you can see the type as we mentioned there that this, that is a load balancer and <clears throat> if we have external ip like we are deploying this on any aws or something uh, cloud services like that the external ip will be provided up here okay so as we mentioned that it will be running on localhost so let's go and see if it is running or not okay so let me open a browser and let's go to localhost 80 so as you can see the port which it is running on the exposed port is 80 and 3001 is for the backend so let's go to 80 so as you can see we are getting the server name here so yt server so let's go and see kubectl get pods and as you can see this is the pod name this is the host name or the this is the host name which currently the server is running on so bzjq8 this one okay now let's delete this one and see what happens so control c and we'll use kubectl delete pod and the pod name so as you can see it's getting deleted and it will take a little bit of time and if you refresh the page here you can see it's gone to some different pod now which is this one and if you see it is getting terminated but the deployment and the control plane uh, make sure that we have every time the three replicas of our server is running so it will basic it is basically creating another another replica of the backend server now if we refresh it again it will basically change to some different some different replica of the front end server so that's how you basically work with kubernetes on a local machine so to advance this video or uh, for the next part we will be basically deploying all this application onto a cloud server and this can be anything like aws we will be using eks so i hope you like the video please feel free to subscribe and yeah thanks for watching and see you next time thank you